people are creating pieces of art that are representative of these incredibly special places that we're lucky enough to live near. It's one way of sharing the beauty of those places. For artists in wilderness, it's really kind of like a retreat. And wilderness is it's much more a part of my work than I probably realized earlier on that it's kind of the backdrop for a lot of my, you know, just ideas, intention, purpose. It's been great to work with the Artists in Wilderness program and to meet people that aren't necessarily artists, that are, are uh, lovers of the backcountry and, you know, protectors of the wilderness, and they get involved with an art program. That's fantastic. My name is Trent Burkett. I live near San Luis Obispo in California. I'm a practicing artist and I also teach. I'm a full professor at uh, University of the Pacific in uh, Stockton, California and chair of the art department there. So I teach uh, sculpture and ceramics mostly. The idea of wilderness, you know, is about some type of departure from our, our normal human invented landscape, whatever that means, you know, cities, whatnot, you know. So getting out into wilderness really means getting away from all those things. To go into those places is something happens there, you know, for me, certainly. The project that I kind of planned for this evolved a little bit last summer in the mountains in the Sierras. Uh, what it became was literally taking um, this idea of taking a series of molds or impressions from places in the landscape, specifically like rock formations. There's a little crystal right here, little crystalline structures. Like I like the spine that kind of flows through here. I've always really been interested in this kind of sculpted landscape and wanting in some way to capture it. But I knew that trying to capture it, like by trying to recreate it or sculpt it, wouldn't work. And so it, that's sort of how I devised this mold system, that that would then be the logical step to use my knowledge and expertise with taking molds. So this is my basic tools. And this is the start. This is basically used to seal this up like a gasket. And these are the plaster packets. So I have this, this makes one mold. I've pre-figured this out. In my studio, I did a whole mock-up with this frame. I made the frame, I got my tools, I figured out what I needed. Thought about anything that could go wrong in the field. I measured out the plaster and figured out exactly how much plaster it takes to fill that frame with the right amount of water. So I figured all this out and made these packets back at my studio and shipped them all out here, ready to go, to drop in my pack and head out. This taps out some of the bubbles. I had kind of studied this area and the maps and I knew I wanted to go up the Yule Creek drainage, which is kind of also by the marble mine. And so that sort of surrounds one part of the Treasure Mountain cap. And then I was interested in some of the historical aspects too, like the town of Crystal. So I did go up the Crystal Road twice and took a series of impressions there. This last week and the part of this process that I've completed are really just maybe half of the process. These will then get shipped back to California to my studio. I'll have these this set of molds. And from those, I will um, make porcelain tiles and use them then to create an actual artwork. 
I'm still going to have, I think, time to sort of reflect by having these, you know, come with me. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll know where each of those was from, and I'm still going to be thinking about those spots. And how could you not, like, have those little associated memories with each of those tiles for where you were at at that time? Like, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to be thinking about that. I'm Terry Talty, and I've been working with Stuart for a long time, making public sculpture and more temporary sculpture projects. And, and my name's Stuart Bremner, and we've, I've been doing sculpture for a long time, metalwork mostly, um, from anything from jewelry to a, a footbridge. Today we set up the Invisible Air Veins, and it's a piece that we came up with for the Artists in the Wilderness program. The piece is a group of weather vanes, and the reason that we group them is that they can have a little bit of a conversation about the wind. They're not always in agreement with where the wind's coming from, and if the wind's a little swirly, they may all be pointing in different directions. Our initial thought with these was that um, everywhere around here are these hidden gems, and these other you know, wilderness, um, wilderness areas in any direction you could walk and run into them. And so why not have something that's an indicator that at any given moment, depending on which way the wind is blowing, it could be, it is pointing. To something. At something yeah. wild. Yeah, hey, look at this, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> we went to the lakes of Lake Ridge and looked out on Thompson Divide. Right. Whole, we got to see all of Thompson Divide in yellow. That was just beautiful. When we were walking around, we just sort of brainstormed a lot of ideas. Well, and, it, and, and you know where we were, Stuart, when we, I think we really came up with this idea was at the Finns. Because those yeah. are such a fantastic, you know, you're, it's just a constantly some new thing to look at every minute, you, every step you take. And although these pieces are tighter together, they're, I think they sort of reflect that the orientation we're feeling yeah, of yeah. walking around and, and walking through the Finns as you go around things. I've been playing around with the idea of, of making forms that when they get snowed on, you get a mound of snow. And that snow forms a shape, so nature builds the sculpture. And these aerovanes will do that. They're made of screen, so they're invisible. And when it snows, they will um, create a nice, white, soft shape. And one thing that we added to it is that when the weight of the snow is on it, um, the bearing will lock in position and it will stop moving so that when it's most visible, it is no longer an indicator of which way the wind's coming from. It more tells a story of where it was when it was snowing. If we hadn't applied to be the artist in the wilderness. We never would have come over here. We wouldn't have been honed in, focused on trying to make something that talks about what we saw and what we experienced, hanging out with the, the environmental folks. We would never have made this. It's yeah. such a great opportunity. It just worked out brilliantly. It was good. Well, it's a, it was a way to change our perspective on, um, mm -hmm. on this part of the world and um, you know, create a piece that hopefully can um, you know, engage other people and change their perspective on, on the world that they live in. Yeah, well, we're really thankful for this opportunity. I am Jill Cher, and I am a fiber artist and I work primarily with felt. I work with natural fibers, I work with natural dyes, and my work is divided between um, functional work, wearable art, 
and then more sculptural work and more conceptual work. Because of the fact that I live in the valley, I wanted to frame my residency in terms of day hikes. Um, this is incredibly biodiverse, this, this sort of elevation zone. One of the day hikes that I took during that week was up through the Thompson Divide with members of Wilderness Workshop. The fact that I was out there really to just take in the images that I was seeing, um, it gave me permission to just look and just to imagine. And these, these are so beautiful. I took a lot of photographs and at night, you know, I just had those images translating into felted pieces kept coming to me and coming to me. At night or in the late afternoon, I would come into my studio, do sketches and try to start um, conceptualizing how those images and sketches could be translated into the ideas that I had. One of the things that I was experimenting with in terms of texture after one of the hikes was how to create dimensional pieces where there would be pockets and also crevices so that I could slice into it and there would be these crevices showing what was inside. Part of it was erosion and cliffs, you know, when things are opened up and there are cracks and you're seeing what's in the cracks. And I wanted to be able to try to capture that in a piece. Oh, wow. This is amazing. Another of the day hikes that I took that week was up the Seven Castles Creek up the frying pan near Basalt. It was so magical. You know, you're in this canyon and you're walking between these walls. It's like you're in a magical land. There were so many textures between the rock walls and what grew in there and moss on the wall and water running down the wall. Around every corner, there was something new to see. It was so beautiful. Yeah. I felt like I'd been to another world entirely when we came out of there. Yeah. I've done two pieces that came out of my hikes for Wilderness Workshop. Um, they were both vessels. The mother's lap rocking chair really came from that hike that we took up in Thompson Divide. And the metaphor was, it's our mother, and that we sit in the embrace of our mother, which is planet Earth. The fact that Wilderness Workshop does this, it's placing a value on on what our interactions with the wilderness is and that that art is important too. I mean, I I feel like all of that is is important. And I'm incredibly grateful to them for having that residency program. <laughs>